Good morning everyone, welcome to HashLearn as a part of our uh, GK preparation for the mains examination of clerk uh, and also as a series of lectures on financial awareness. Uh, today I am going to cover for you the concept of types of banks, right. So, earlier we have discussed basic concepts of banks that you should know like the concept of uh, online transfer of funds and types of checks and other such things. Today we will discuss also uh, about this concepts of different types of banks. So, understanding banks in India, now every day we go to a bank for transaction, but do we know how to classify these banks and what are the different types of banks in our country, right. So, we are going to study all of these today, we can get a basic idea about what are scheduled banks and unscheduled banks and commercial banks and non-commercial banks, private banks and public banks and foreign banks, and development banks, regional rural banks and cooperative banks. So, it is a very uh, elaborate list of uh, things here to do, but for the exam point of view, we need to get a basic idea, have a basic understanding of what these things are and how much is required for you to know uh, for the examination that is there, upcoming exam that is IBPS clerk mains examination. So, in the GK part, you have 50 questions, now how do you tackle those 50 questions, now out of the 50 questions which you have in GK. Uh, which GK is basically in banking exams is current affairs and financial economic awareness. So, around out of 50 questions you could say around 20 to 25 questions can be based on financial and economic awareness and banking is a part of the financial awareness uh, of the examination. So, let us start by understanding the types of banks. So, we will go through a graphic uh, representation of the different types of banks in our country. So, let us say here. Uh, we take types of banks as a heading here and see what are the first level of difference that we should know about. So, when you categorize banks the first level, you can say that these are three types. We have scheduled banks, non-scheduled banks and development banks. So, the banks that we have can be first classified into scheduled, non-scheduled and development banks. Here, I would like to tell you that scheduled banks are the ones which are in the second schedule of the Reserve Bank of India, that is why they call it as scheduled bank, okay, there is a reason behind why this name is there. The second schedule of the RBI Act 1934, these are called as scheduled banks. <coughs> now, RBI Act 19 was passed in 1934 and RBI came to existence in the year 1935, okay. That is one thing that you should know about the RBI. The Reserve Bank of India was created by the Britishers to better control the monetary policy in their colonial uh, stations in India, Pakistan, the entire area which we have here. That is the main reason behind uh, Reserve Bank of India coming up in the year 1935 and later on post the independence of India, it was nationalized. As you can say, the Indian government purchased, acquired the shares of all the private shareholders in the Reserve Bank of India. So, in the RBI Act, there was two schedules, the first schedule and the second schedule. The first schedule talks about the land of India, the different parts of India and all of those things and the second schedule talks about the uh, banks which are licensed by the Reserve Bank of India. So, we say scheduled banks are those banks, okay. The banks which are not basically created and not regulated by RBI are called as non-scheduled banks and development banks are different types of banks set up by the government and RBI for special purposes for the development of our country, just a little bit about understanding about these first classification, scheduled bank, non-scheduled banks and development banks. Next, if you look at the scheduled banks, you can say again that these are of two types, the scheduled commercial banks and scheduled cooperative banks. Now, in this discussion later on, we will understand more about what are cooperative banks. For the time being, just understand that this is the first uh, level, this a uh, second level of classification of what are scheduled banks, the two types, scheduled commercial banks and scheduled cooperative banks. And similarly, when we talk about non-scheduled banks, there are two types, commercial banks and cooperative banks and the non-scheduled commercial banks are called as local area banks. You can see this, non-scheduled commercial banks are called as local area banks and right now there are only three local area banks in India and later on in the slides, we will see what are the names of the three local area banks or LABs. Now, uh, if you see scheduled commercial banks are again we can say uh, three types, we have the, uh, four types public sector banks, uh, regional rural banks, foreign banks and private banks. So, there are four types of 
uh, scheduled commercial banks. Public sector banks are those banks where the major uh, shareholding is by the government. So, we say that these banks are public sector banks which includes nationalized banks, SBI, IDBI and one of the payment banks which is also a public sector bank that is the Indian Post Payments Bank. So, we will see about these public sector banks also later in the slides here. The scheduled uh, commercial banks are these four types, public sector, regional, rural banks, uh, foreign banks and private banks. Now, when we talk about scheduled cooperative banks, there are two types again there. One is your urban and the another one is state. So, urban cooperative banks and state cooperative banks, that is the classification that we need to understand. So, this here represents all of the types of banks. Now, there is a type of bank which we have not put here explicitly. There is a special type of bank that is called payments banks. I have discussed earlier also with you about payments bank. The payments banks are special types of banks which came up only in the year 2015 and these banks, there is one public sector bank which is also payment banks and then most of the payment banks are private banks. And payment banks are special types of banks where you can have a deposit, maximum deposit of 1 lakh, they do not give you debit cards, they do not give you credit cards, they do not give loans and they do not perform other banking functions. These are mostly app based services like the Paytm payments bank or the Airtel payments bank or the Geo payments bank or the Indian post payments bank or the Fino payments bank, these are the different types of different payment banks which we have in our country. Now, let us understand here the difference between scheduled and non-scheduled banks. So, by definition we say that the scheduled bank is one which is governed which are listed in the second schedule of the Reserve Bank of India 1934 and uh, the non-scheduled banks are the ones which are not listed in the second schedule. That is the difference in terms of uh, what is the definition of a scheduled bank and a non-scheduled bank. Uh, now, paid up capital, so when you start you form a bank, you know, uh, banks are basically joint stock companies and when you form a bank, uh, what is the minimum paid up capital that is 25 lakhs for a scheduled bank and for a non-scheduled bank, there is no such obligation, there is no such requirement of any paid up capital for a non-scheduled bank. So, that is the second level of difference regarding scheduled and non-scheduled banks. Let us talk about the third one that is cash reserve ratio. Uh, so, there is a 4 percent cash uh, reserve ratio CRR uh, which the uh, scheduled banks have to maintain with RBI. So, the total money that they have total liquidity that they have, 4 percent they have to keep with RBI which they cannot use. This is what is called as cash reserve ratio. Later on when we study more about advanced banking concepts and talk about open market operations and liquidity adjustment facilities and other concepts, then we will see these things in more detail to understand what is cash reserve ratio. And there is no such obligation, no such requirement for a non-scheduled bank to have uh, any deposit with RBI. Next is borrowing from RBI. Now, a scheduled bank can borrow money from RBI at repo rate or uh, you know they can also borrow money at bank rate. So, they can more borrow money uh, at repo rate, uh, but there is no such uh, allowance for a non-scheduled bank. So, usually non-scheduled banks not allowed to borrow money from RBI, Reserve Bank of India at the repo rate. And what is the repo rate? Is the rate at which banks borrow money from RBI for a short period, usually overnight to one day. And uh, this is one of the major rates that decides the monetary policy of RBI. So, whenever RBI is going to change its monetary policy, then they will change the repo rate. So, right now the repo rate is 6.5 percent. If the rate, repo rate goes up, then the banking uh, lending rates also go up. It becomes difficult for people to buy cars and homes and investments and other such things and therefore, it impacts the economy as a whole. If repo rate goes down, the reverse of that happens. Now, borrowing from RBI, banks can borrow money from RBI at repo rate and members of clearing houses. So, a clearing house is when you send a check and the check goes to the clearing house from which the amount gets transferred to the account of the payee. The one who is issuing the check is a payer, the one who is getting paid is called payee. Now, this we have discussed earlier also in types of checks. So, member of clearing houses, yes. Scheduled banks are members of clearing houses, whereas non-scheduled banks are not members of clearing houses. So, point by point we have seen the difference between scheduled banks and non-scheduled bank in this slide. Next, let us talk about the 
number of scheduled commercial banks in India stands at 233 as on 15 10th as updated as 15th of October 2018 the number stays same in December also it is not changed there is no change in this number. Now number of scheduled commercial banks 233 now let us look at a breakup of these the state bank of India is 1 okay then we have IDBI 1 and then we have nationalized banks 19 and all of these we can also call as public sector banks PSBs public sector banks and uh, so we have state bank of India that is 1 and IDBI that is 1 and then nationalized banks 19 and 19 plus 2 becomes 21. One more public sector bank is the payments banks called as IPPB okay. So, total number of public sector banks then becomes 22. Now, we have private banks in India 31 like Axis Bank, HDFC banks, ICICI banks with the major share holding is by private share uh, holders you know. Uh, then that is called as a private bank, so, 31 private banks are there in our country uh, like a bank like we can talk about HDFC, ICICI, Axis, Kotak Mahindra all of these are private sector banks. Next we have uh, private banks foreign, there are 45 foreign banks operating in India with at least one branch in any of the cities in India. Then we have regional rural banks. Now, what are these regional rural banks like this Thaniya Grameen Bank in term in Hindi we say Thaniya regional Grameen rural and bank ok. So, uh, regional rural banks what are these and how they were created and what is the difference between a scheduled bank and a regional rural bank or a cooperative bank and a regional rural bank those things we will see later in this video itself ok. Alright, let us continue scheduled state cooperative banks are 20, payment banks are 6 and scheduled urban cooperative banks are 54 when you add up all of these numbers it becomes 233 compared to that the number of non scheduled banks is very high standing at 1507 non scheduled banks are there most of these which are cooperative banks because if you look at the scheduled non scheduled commercial banks there are only 3 local area banks are there one is the coastal uh, local area bank. Krishna Bhima Samruddhi local area bank and the Subhadra local area bank earlier there were 4 but now there is only 3 uh, as per the latest information from the RBI's website itself uh, the 3 local area banks operating in India and then non scheduled cooperative banks 13 and non scheduled urban cooperative banks 1491 and that takes the number to 1507 but if you see non scheduled commercial banks then there are only 3 non scheduled commercial banks in our country ok. Alright, so these uh, this is a breakup of all the banks that we should uh, we have exact detailed data about the number of banks as per the website RBI's website and as per the second schedule of Reserve Bank of India Act 1934 which is accessible online you can go ahead and go through RBI's website and check the second schedule of RBI Act 1934 alright. Let us now see what are these development banks? So, now till now we have seen the scheduled banks and non scheduled banks, but initially we have seen that there are three types of banks largely scheduled, non scheduled, and development banks. So, what are these development banks? These are specialized banks catering to uh, different aspects of the economy and primarily uh, triggered, uh, primarily you can say uh, the aim is to help in the growth of the economy. All right. So, let us look at one of the major uh, development banks in our country Nabad which earlier was a fully owned subsidiary of the Reserve Bank of India, but now it is a fully owned subsidiary or you can say a fully government bank it is completely owned by the central government and that is what we need to understand here. So, first of all what is the full form of Nabad? If you look at the full form of Nabad that is the National Bank for Agricultural and Rural Development. So, the, as the name suggests the primary purpose of Nabad is to help develop the rural areas and to help develop the agricultural sector of our country. Uh, in agriculture is the backbone of our economy if you see even today although uh, today uh, service sector that is the uh, tertiary sector. So, the Indian economy is into three sectors primary, secondary and tertiary. Uh, primary sector being the agriculture sector, secondary sector being the industry and tertiary sector being the services, the service sector. So, today service sector is the major contributor towards India's GDP right. Earlier when India became independent in 1951 uh, when, when we had the first 5 year plan uh, the uh, agriculture sector was a major contributor to our economy almost 60 percent 
65 percent contribution to India's GDP was by the agriculture sector. Today, it's come down to around 23, 24 percent. But agriculture sector is a very, very big sector, and it employs more than 40 percent of the labor force of our country. So, it's imperative that India focuses on developing the agriculture sector, and that's for this purpose that this bank was set up. And you can see, in the year 1982, as a subsidiary of the RBI Reserve Bank of India. And NABARD is the principal financial institution of India de devoted to the development of rural sector. So, it is the principal uh, financial organization. On October 13, so this is an important date, this is why we are going to underline this. Okay. On October 13, 2010, Government of India acquired RBI's 71.5 percent share holding in NABARD, leaving RBI with only 1 percent share. Now, this all happened because of the uh, you can say the recommendations of the Narsimham Committee 2 report. The second report of Narsimham Committee, the two uh, committees for the Narsimham Committee was formed uh, post the liberalization of India in 1981 when P. V. Narsimha Rao was the Prime Minister of India and uh, Manmohan Singh, Dr. Manmohan Singh was the Finance Minister of India. And then two uh, steps recommendations were given by Narsimham Committee uh, which are called as the Narsimham Committee Report 1 and Narsimham Committee Report 2. And the Nasimum Committee Report 2 talked about, uh, you know, segregating RBI from owning banks. So, RBI is the governing bank in the country and governing regulatory body can also not at the same time be the controlling agency in a commercial bank or a development bank. And with the recommendations, uh, first SBI was acquired, uh, these, uh, the shares of SBI were acquired from RBI by the government and next is NABARD. So, 71.5 percent of RBI shareholding was purchased. Later on in January 2018, Parliament passed the NABARD Bill 2017, paving way for RBI's exit from NABARD. That means, whatever 1 percent share that RBI had, that also was purchased by the uh, Union Government, the Central Government. In April 2018, Government of India increased NABARD's authorized capital to rupees 30,000 crores. So, each of these can be a current affairs question for you in based on financial awareness. Like what is the current authorized capital of NABARD? The answer would be rupees 30,000 crores. Okay. In which year did government acquire 71.5 percent shareholding of NABARD from the RBI? Then the answer would be in the year 2010. So, th each of these things that we are discussing here is a current affair question in itself. Okay. As of now, NABARD is a 100 percent state owned entity. Another uh, question for you could be, where is the headquarter of NABARD that is in Mumbai and who is the chairman of NABARD? The answer is Harsh Kumar Bhanwala. So, you see in this one paragraph, we can create four, five different questions that can very likely come in exams like IBPS clerk mains GK part or even in IBPS PO mains examination. Next, if you look at the uh, next uh, bank, that is the National Housing Bank. And it is a fully owned subsidiary of Reserve Bank of India. So, this is still the uh, subsidiary of Reserve Bank of India. The government is in the process of acquiring it, but it is not yet acquired. So, what we should know is when was it set up? 9th July 1988. So, the year is 1988 based on the National Housing Bank Act of 1987. And it is the apex that is the principal financial institution for housing in our country. And the headquarter is in New Delhi, and chairman is Shri Ram Kalyanaraman. Right? So you can see here uh, when did the bank start? What is the full form of the bank? Where is the headquarter of the bank? And who is the chairman or the managing director of the bank? All of these things are very important from exam point of view. That that's why we are talking about what all you should focus on, what all you should note down. Right? With all we are doing these things so that you can crack your IBPS clerk mains examination. So, every aspect of GK is current affairs, financial awareness, economic concepts, uh, computer awareness, right? Uh, static GK, everything we are going to discuss and so that you have all the means and tools required to crack your examination. That is one of our main goals, principal goals at Hashland to make sure that you have all the required information that can help you crack your examination. All right, let's go and let's see the third uh, development bank. That is the Small Industries Development Bank of India. That is SIDB. Okay, uh, SIDB. That is small. It's focus on micro, small, and medium enterprises. Established in 1990, SIDB is India's chief financial institution to help 
micro that is very small then small and then medium enterprise sector by providing them with financial assistance not just financial assistance by providing them also with skill upgradation and uh, help in understanding what are the latest machineries and tools that they should have and uh, also in various ways uh, to make sure that they grow and participate in the overall growth of our country right the skill upgradation uh, marketing support technological assistance etc sidbi operates under the department of financial services government of india not controlled by rbi and the headquarter of sidbi is in lucknow and the cmd now since it's a government uh, you can say the government department you know which is called a bank uh, the head of the department will always be a government officer an is officer is always the head of the department right now the is officer who is the head of the cmd the chairman and managing director of sidbi is mohammad mustafa all right that's all of these become an important question for you next if you look at the uh, fourth development banks these are the only four banks the development banks that are regulated by the government or by the rbi the export import bank of india the exim bank so what is the full form of exim is the export import bank okay so established in 1982 the exim bank along with nabard you can see at the same time 1982 is for nabard as well as exim bank the exim bank is india's main export finance bank so export finance institutions so helping exporters with financial assistance uh, to uh, improve their uh, you know exporting activities it provides financial support to business which deal in export and import Exim Bank is managed by a board of directors, which has representatives from the government, from RBI, Export Credit Guarantee Corporation of India (ECGCI). This is E. What is the full form of ECGCI? <coughs> If this comes in your examination, you should know the answer. Export Credit Guarantee Corporation of India, a financial institution of public sector banks. So it's got representative from each of the public sector banks and the business community. So these are the representatives who are there in the board of directors of this bank. Very very important bank, the Exim Bank, the Export Import Bank of India. And where's the headquarter of Exim Bank? The answer is it's in Mumbai. And who is the managing director of Exim Bank? The answer is David Rasmina. So we have covered now for you the four type four. development banks that you as a student aspiring for banking examinations must be aware of clear next we'll look at the foreign banks so earlier we have discussed that there are 45 foreign banks currently operational in india and you can find the name of these 45 foreign banks licensed by the rbi to operate in india so these 45 foreign banks are also scheduled banks because their name is listed in the second schedule of the reserve bank of india act 1934 clear and what we'll do now in this slide is to look at the top 10 banks so first of all you see as on uh, you know january 31 uh, rbi data there are 45 foreign banks in india having a total of 286 branches across the country based on the number of branches the top foreign banks are now what is uh, suppose this question comes in your examination as a gk question like which uh, in terms of number of branches which foreign bank is the uh, top bank in india or we can say which foreign bank has maximum number of branches in india what will be the answer right what will be the answer to this question which foreign bank has maximum number of branches uh, in india so for that we need to know the list of foreign banks the top 10 banks in our country the uh, by far uh, ahead by a huge margin is the standard chartered bank with 100 branches in our country uh, the distant second is the city bank which has got 35 uh, branches it's like almost one third of the number of branches of standard chartered bank and then we have the hsbc uh, bank very closely following uh, city bank in terms of number of branches and then we have dosh bank with 17 and dbs bank limited which is 12 and then other num- other banks have numbers in single digits and you can see bnb paribas is 8 barclays bank has 6 Uh, Shinhan Bank is six. Bank of America is four, and J.P. Morgan Chase Bank is four. Now, if you see, uh, we have also given you the list uh, uh, that what is the country of origin, from which countries uh, do these banks normally come from, and you can see very clearly, Standard Chartered Bank originates from U.K., Citibank from U.S.A., H.S.B.C. from Hong Kong, Deutsche Bank from Germany, D.B.S. Bank from Singapore. 
BNB Paribas from France and Barclays from UK, uh, Shinhan from South Korea, Bank of America from USA and JP Morgan Chase from USA. That could also be a question like BNB Paribas is from which country and then if you do not know you will not be able to answer. The answer is BNB Paribas is from France. So, this is a list of top 10 foreign banks in our country based on the number of branches they have in our country. All right. Let us move to the cooperative banks. So, what is a cooperative bank? Right. So, there are three types of cooperative banks here. Let us understand. Uh, before that, let us get an idea of what is a cooperative bank. Let us say, for example, you are in a village and you uh, there are 20 or 30 people in a village who want to form a society. They want to form a kind of a, a joint committee. Let us say where all of them will put 500, 500 rupees in that uh, committee and let us say that there are 10 people and now they have all put 500 rupees. So, there is 5000 rupees now as a corpus of that committee. Tomorrow if one of those 10 persons, now each of them is a part of the committee. If tomorrow the, one of the 10 persons needs let us say 1000 rupees. Then he can borrow that from the corpus that they have created, clear? And he can pay interest just like people pay interest to a bank. He has to pay interest to the committee that is there. This is how a cooperative society works, where people come together to cooperate. So the main purpose is cooperation to help each other, clear? Not profit. The main pur purpose is not profit making here. The main purpose is cooperation. So what they do in places where the, the traditional banks are not there and uh, those who cannot get loans from traditional banks. So, there this concept of cooperative banks becomes very helpful in the rural, uh, very remote places in our country. So, you, you create a society in which people are there who are all members of the society, they are not account holders. You see banks have account holders, cooperative banks do not have account holders, they are members and each of them pool in money together and from that pool, the common pool that they have created, people take money as loan as and when required and they help each other, they help develop the rural economy. So, uh, you see the cooperative banks can be divided into three levels. Primary credit society, these, these cooperative banks operate at the village level and deal with members residing in one locality. So, we talk about members who are the members who started this society, this is called as a primary credit society. Now, these primary credit societies, societies which are working at the village level are managed by the central cooperative banks. Now, central cooperative banks work at the city level, at the district level because under one district there are number of villages. So, this is like the governing uh, body for the primary credit societies. So, primary credit societies are controlled by, regulated by, overseen by, held by you know the central cooperative banks. You can say the primary credit societies are members of the uh, central cooperative banks. Okay? And then we have the uh, highest cooperative bank in the state is a state cooperative bank. These banks are the head cooperative banks of a state and there is nothing like a head cooperative bank of a nation. Cooperative banks work at the state levels only. So, the state cooperative banks are the head cooperative banks of the state and all of the central cooperative banks are members of the state cooperative banks. So, state cooperative banks govern or control or regulate or help the uh, central cooperative banks which on the other hand govern, control, regulate and help the primary credit society. So, this is the uh, you know three levels of the cooperative banks in our country. Now, what is the difference between a commercial bank and a cooperative bank? So, just a few main things is a uh, definition wise. A commercial bank's primary purpose is to make profit and a commercial bank does all types of banking operations like de get, get taking deposits, giving loans and providing other types of financial instruments like right? okay, basic investment products. Whereas, the cooperative banks is mainly to cater to the finance to farmers and rural industries and to trade and sometimes to even industry of urban areas, but to a limited extent of loan. Primary purpose of definition is the bank created to help uh, the uh, farmers and rural industries and the trade in the rural areas. Okay? Now, regulatory act, now this is the main difference, regulatory act, which act regulates the commercial banks. The Banking Regulations Act of 1949. Okay? So, Banking Regulation Act governs banks like what can banks do, what are the functions of the banks and all those things come under this uh, Banking Regulations Act of 1949 whereas, cooperative banks are governed by the Cooperative Societies Act of 1965, so that is an important GK question for you. 
right, uh, which act is uh, you know governing act for cooperative banks, the cooperative societies act came into existence in which year, the answer will be 1965. The area of operation is large for commercial bank, commercial banks can operate on a national level, so a commercial bank having headquarter in Bangalore can have its branch in Delhi, but a cooperative bank has to be within the state. A uh, primary credit society can be within the village, uh, we can say central is within the district, you know? so their area of operation and control is very small compared to the area of operation of a commercial bank. Primary motive of a commercial bank is profit whereas that of the cooperative banks is service, helping people. Borrowers of a commercial bank are called account holders whereas uh, borrowers of a cooperative banks are called as members, shareholders, they are, they have all given money to start the cooperative bank. Banking services, a commercial bank can offer an array of services, even financial products and that is less uh, compared to commercial banks, we will talk about cooperative banks and interest rates are higher, um, less in commercial banks whereas in cooperative banks they are slightly higher. So, this is the difference between cooperative uh, commercial banks and cooperative banks. Next, we will look at the regional rural banks RRB. So, these are banks which were established in 1975, that is the first question for you. Under the provisions, first under the ordinance called as RRB ordinance and then the same ordinance became an act in 1976. So, first we can say that the regional rural banks were set up in 1975 through uh, the regional rural bank ordinance of 1975 and later on through the regional rural bank act of 1976. Primary purpose to develop the rural economy. Okay. Next we will understand here the difference between regional rural banks and commercial banks. So, what is the purpose of uh, a regional rural bank to develop rural economy whereas, commercial bank is profit act. Now, which act governs the regional rural bank, the RRB act of 1976 whereas, commercial banks are governed by the banking regulations act of 1949 that already we have seen. Scope is small for regional rural banks whereas, it is wide from for commercial banks, area of operation is rural and semi urban whereas, commercial banks can operate nationwide in both urban, semi urban and rural areas and stakeholders. Now, this is an important thing to for you to know, this is a fixed formula for the shareholding of a regional rural banks, fixed formula is there, 50 percent shares is owned by the central government. 15 percent by the state government in which that bank is there and 35 percent by the sponsor bank. So, this is one thing to understand. Whenever we have a regional rural bank, there will always be a head bank, a commercial bank, let us say for example, SBI which is the sponsor of that regional rural bank and this commercial bank, it, it could be a public sector bank or a private sector bank, is the sponsor of the regional rural bank and this bank will own 35 percent shares in the RRB. Okay, so, that is a fixed formula that is there, 50 percent by the central government, 15 percent by the state government and 35 percent by the sponsor bank, whereas there is no such fixed formula for the shareholders of a commercial bank. Uh, the only thing that we know is that if a commercial bank is a public sector bank, it means that more than 50 percent of the shares of that bank are owned by the central government. So, that is the difference between uh, we can say a regional rural bank, two major, major things are there, one is the act, when was it passed and second is the formula for shareholders. These two things if you know and have a basic understanding that is more than sufficient for you for your exam purpose. So, we have discussed about the types of banks today. Uh, all types of banks that are operational in India, so that you have more information with you to tackle questions based on these concepts in your examination. Now, the time for the CPP in which we have 10 questions from this topic, those who have passport access will start solving the question and the doubts that you have, you can ask with me later. So, best of luck to you for your examination and thank you for watching the video.